Hello, guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Album of Horses. This is going to be part 10. In the last episode, we talked about the Appaloosa and the Quarter Horse. And in this one, we'll be talking, I know we'll be talking about the Palomino, but let's see what else we'll be talking about. We are almost through this book, and I, we only do two of these at a time, basically because there are a lot of reading, and they take about 20 minutes each session, so... Uh, we are to the Palomino and the Shetland Pony, apparently. But as you can see, we only have the Welsh Mountain Pony, the Chikatik Pony, Burrow or Donkey, Mule, Routine of Happiness, and No Sugar Thank You. So we only have... One, two, three, four. We only have four more episodes left in this series, and then it will be done. So, with that being said, this is also copyright information. This is a book by Margaret Henry. Illustrated by Wesley Dennis. It's a book from 1965. And we are going to get started here. Clydesdale with the Zaner. Ah. Quarter horse. Here we go. The Palomino. And we're going to uh, take a look at these pictures first, as per the usual. The Palomino is not a breed, but a color. The goldest color in the world. If you polished a gold coin all day long, still it would not take on the burnished brightness of a Palomino's coat. When a horseman finds a golden stallion that will always... Oh. Finds a, when a horseman finds a golden stallion that will always sire a golden colt, like the goose that always laid a golden egg, then the Palomino will be a breed instead of a color. I get it. Yeah. Um... It, it, it's a color now, but if there were if there were a stallion that had the genetics to actually make a Palomino every single time, then it would actually be a breed that they could register. I get it. Okay. Um, meanwhile, the tinge of excitement hovers over every every ranch at fulling time, for only about half the expected Palominos turn out to be true ones. Outcroppings of golden horses appear among Tennessee walkers, among American saddle horses, among quarter horses, but there are surprise. But there are surprises, gold premium surprises. The name of these rare ones can be entered in their own registries, just as if they were the sedate brown or bay coats of their ancestors. As for good measure, they may be entered in the Palomino registry too, but it is a different. But it is different with the Palomino. The foals of a Palomino sire and dam may turn out not to be golden at all. They may be white, colorless creatures with glassy, pink, or blue eyes and outcasts. When this happens, the stable owner turns away, heavy-hearted, wondering why in the world he ever wanted to raise golden horses. But even in his disappointment, he knows why he is a golden pro he is a gold prospector hopeful of discovering a colt that will stamp his sons with pure gold. The name Palomino is a delight on the imagination, but the meaning is not... But the meaning is not. <laughs> it is Spanish, and translated literally, it means a pigeon or a stained shirt. Students of word insist that neither of these meanings could refer to the dazzling Palomino. They would like to change the name to Palo Palomila, the Spanish word for a flying moth or a milk white seed. A milk white steed. Excuse me. Horsemen agree that Palomila may have a prettier thought behind it, but but would you but would have you understand that a Palomino is not a white horse. His color is gold, and it can vary only in the degree of its goldness. Three shades. Lighter uh, lighter or three shades darker than a newly minted coin, and only the only thing white about a Palomino is his mane and tail, and white stockings, perhaps a blaze. Let's um, look at these. Okay. 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 Gonna zoom in on these for a little bit. Historians rally around the horsemen. The name is all right. The Palomino came to America by way of Spain, and in Spain there was a royal family named Palomina. Winemakers, 
they were, and they used the juice of golden grapes to make their wines. The house of Palomina was noted for its royal horses as well. These were tawny creatures with manes and tails as white as milkweed floss. Only in the United States, however, is the name Palomino applied to golden horses. In Mexico, they are Isabelis, in honor of the Spanish queen Isabella. And in Spain, they are simply the Caballo de Oro, horses of gold. The clashing of swords over the name still goes on, but let the horseman hear you call a Palomino a Palomila, and he will walk off wrinkling his nose in distaste. A cattleman of old California, Don Esteban, is credited with owning the first Palomino in America in 1800, along with harvest time, oh, along about harvest time, when range horses were brought in to thresh wheat, Don Esteban called, called, to his, called his peons together. To the one who finds the most beautiful horse in the country, he said, I give much silver. The peons, however, were unable to pick out any one horse for in the roundup, the herds were swallowed in dust, and in the threshing, they were all covered, covered over with chaff. But a little Indian boy spied a glint of gold in the milling mob. He captured the golden colt, brushed him clean, washed his tail and mane, and presented him to Don Esteban. This one, the story, this one, the story goes, was the first true Palomino found in the New World, and he sired many golden colts. Mexicans tell a different story altogether. One starless night, they say, two Indians stole into, into, um, into the hacienda of a Spanish grande and spirited away a pure white stallion and a buckskin mare. A year later, the mare escaped from the Indians and fled back home with a little blonde filly at her, hill, uh, at her heels. The stories are alike in one respect. Both golden creatures were remarkable for more than just their color. They have, they had the refined, shapely heads and underlying dark skin and the dark eyes of the Arabian. Today, these are the marks of distinction in the Palomino. One registry will not accept Palominas unless his skin is dark beneath the gold and his eyes hazel or brown. Palominos flourished in numbers for a while, and then they began to peter out because they lost their Arabian look. Who wanted to be seen riding a jug-headed, scrubby creature, even if it, if it, if its color did vie with the sun? The other established breeds could, could furnish better riding horses, and color was only skin deep after all. But was it? California, always partial to its gold, began to breed up the Palominos. Horsemen brought in chestnut and bay Arabians, thoroughbreds, American saddle horses, and quarter horses, and bred them to their palominos. They wanted to produce more than color, and they did. They developed three fixed types of palominos, the stock horse, the pleasure horse, and the parade horse. The palomino stock horse is really... Uh, is The palomino stock horses are really glorified... Quarter Horses and Roy Rogers' Trigger is the most famous of them all. They could do what any good quarter horse can do. They can help brand steers and the best of them, with the best of them, and race the short distances to win. One golden stock horse could even take a lasso in his teeth and rope a little doggy alone. And the Palomino, King Gold, Gold King Bailey, in race after race with quarter horses and thoroughbreds finished away out in front. He won so often they nicknamed him Galloping Gold. The Pleasure Palominos ha often have American saddle horse blood in their veins and they high step the bridle paths, weaving in and out the dapple shaded the the dappled the dappled shade like grey shutters in the sun. Grey oh shuttles in the sun. But it is the parade Palomino that is best known. That is best known in the tournament of roses in Pasadena. The Palominos are, for many, more stirring than the millions of flowers that make up the floats. It, it is the Palominos that draw shrieks of joy from the children, especially when Lou Carrillo's conquistador dance dances the fandango, or when the sheriff's entire posse of golden horses marches by to the oomph. 
oompa oompa of the high school bands. <coughs> Life for a parade, Palomino, is a round of music and excitement. He could enter a parade unadorned, but instead of his saddle and bridle gleam with silver until the horse's coat and his trappings outshine each other. He seems to sense that his business is show business, and the heavy silver saddles are his costume. At Fiesta time in Santa Barbara, Palominos are actors in a play. They carry swashbuckling cab caballeros down from the hills into the full light of the stage, where they dance the quadrille, but not even the major beauty of their steps equal the movement when the audience first spies them on the hilltop and the moon striking full upon the golden coats and the deep velvet sky for a backdrop. Palominos are at their golden best, the pageants, parades, and fiestas, and they have become so popular that horsemen from all over the country are going west to find them. A new gold rush is on. Men seek Palomino gold. And that was Palomino, about the Palomino. Now we are going to read about the Shetland Pony. That's so cute. Stole the kid's hat. They really are little mischievous boogers. Okay. Okay. The Shetland Pony. The story of the Shetland Pony is a Cinderella story. Sheltie, as he is called in Great Britain, started out his life as a dredge. In the bleak and stormy Shetland Islands north of Scotland, he was a miniature draft animal, a, a chunk. He looked like a drafter with his blocky build, and he worked like one, patiently and all day long. It was Sheltie who who carried bulging baskets of peat down from the hills to heat the little cottages of, in the glens. It was Sheltie who carried sacks of seaweed up from the shores to fertilize the tiny farm patches, and it was Sheltie who worked in front of a small wooden plow while his, thr his thrifty master spread seaweed in the furrows. Never was there another pony who filled so many needs. For long... For long years, he furnished the only transportation on the island, even though he stood only 39 inches high. The, and, did I read that right? 39 inches high, yeah. The people rode him wherever they went. If the cluster of shops that made up a, ten, a tune was 20 miles away, or even 30, they often rode him there without stopping. Sometimes the rider was a man, hard-muscled and big. Sometimes it was a plump woman whose skirt billowed out like a feather bed. And all this, all that showed of poor Sheltie was his pert little head and his grand sweeping tail. But Sheltie bore his burdens as patiently as he bore the weather. Drizzle, 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 wind, 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 what did it matter? His wild mop of a mane made a shield for his eyes, and his long shaggy hair made a good raincoat, rain and water waterproof. He faced the, bra the brawling blast of the gales and the spindrift of the sea. Sheltie worked as a pit pony, too, in the mines of England. Here he pulled coal carts through the long, cramped passages, his lungs breathing coal dust and hot, stuffy air, his, ear his ears deafened by the tumbling lumps of spilling coal. Some of the pit ponies never in all their lives, came up for a breath of clean, fresh air, and they could never rear up in play without butting their heads against the low roof, roofs. In fact, a pit pony forgot how to play. He just worked the day around. He just worked the days around and slept the nights around and lived and died in the pits. But at last, a happy day arrived. The mines were electrified, and there was there was no. Oh, this is a short one. Longer the need for a pit pony. At, at last roads were carved through the rocky hills of the Shetland Islands and trucks came to replace the pack pony. Okay, now I just wanted to finish that so we could get a better look at these pictures here. Okay. Now, now a happy thought came to the islanders. Why could not their husky little drafters become child, children's ponies the world over? For answer, they, they hoisted the squealing creatures aboard steamers by means of a sling and cranes, and off the ponies sailed far across the sea to America. 
at the end of the journey, the a curious thing happened. All in a twinkling, life for um, all in a twinkling, life for Shelty was transformed. It was as if some magic wand had touched him. The wand had five pudgy fingers that tippeted lightly over his shaggy coat, then wiggling deep into his thick, warm fur beneath, wide, ecstatic eyes looking long into his own. Small palms reaching out for a, to, to cup his muzzle. And suddenly, in the touching, it seemed that two long-lost creatures were restored to each other. Children everywhere claimed the tiny pony for their own. The Shelty basked in happiness for a work workaday. Oh, I wasn't familiar with that word. Workaday Dredge had become a fun-loving playmate. No door was closed to him, and he taught himself how to slide bolts open. Oh, slide bolts, open gates, rattle latches. His long lips became expert at plucking caps from children's heads or kerchiefs from pockets, and always these little tricks ended in a rousing game of tag. As for work, there was none. (laughs) A canter over the countryside with a lightweight child on his back was no work. Or pulling a basket basket cart of children to a picnic. He liked picnics. To him, they meant cool streams with forget-me-nots growing in in tasty clumps along the banks and a tossed apple core to munch for dessert. As a children's, as a child's playmate, Shelty no longer needed to, to look like a chunk. In fact, a child could ride more securely if he were able to clasp the pony by his knees, or with his knees. With that in mind, breeders began to develop the American-type Shetland, slimmer of barrel, but no taller. And so, with the years, there came to be two types of Shetlands, the slender American and the English draft. While the English type is usually solid black, brown, or bay, the American is often piebald. Children seem to just, seemed just as eager to adopt one as the other. Parents, too, are completely won by the Shetland's gentle charm, and they have found that the way to keep him gentle is to make certain he is neither overfed or mi- nor mistreated. To understand the care and keeping of our present-day Shetlands, we need to peer into their past with pony-like curiosity. Picture those lo- lonely Shetland l- islands, so lonely that when the Romans discovered them, they named the group Ultima Thule, or the edge of the world. Picture the wind lashing and pounding the land so that trees grew dwarfed, or not at all. And picture the rocks whipped here, ripped bare of soil, except for a thin layer in the glens. The people had to work so hard to rest a living that there, that they needed a sturdy little beast to work with them. It was the sh- the sh- the shelty that became their farmland, their farm hand rather. But in return for his labor, there was little the people could give. All they could do after a day's work was to throw him a bit of hay or turn him out to the coarse grass. And if the, and if the spring was slow in coming, there was often no fodder at all except heather or prickly seaweed left by the tide. But one thing the Shetlanders did give their ponies in abundance, and that was comrad- comradeship. Their low graystone cottages had one, but one door, and when the wind lashed into a fury, and the sea battered at the rocks and went up the funnels of, sp- of spoon, then man and pony hurried through the same door and found warmth and comfort around the glowing peat fire. It, it, needed, it needs only a little imagine, imagining to see that our shelties, too, will thrive on the same treatment, the simplest affair Daily canter and an open door to our hearts. And that was about the Shetland Pony. Up next, we'll read about the Welsh Mountain Pony and the Chikatik Pony. But um, that will be in another episode. We uh, This has been a reading of The Album of Horses by Margaret Henry. Um, if you like this content, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell. Also, if you want to support me in any way, the information will be in the description below. As mentioned before, the intro and outro song is used with permission. And with that being said, thanks for watching, everyone.
And as always, have a great day.